Welcome to Politics Done Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning, Texas. Good morning, the United States of America. And of course, good morning to the world. Many ask, why do you start it that way? Why do you talk to all those people? Well, folks, guess what? Your KPFT program is being listened to not only here in Houston, not only here in Harris County, not only here in Texas, not only here in the United States, but around the world. And we're t- talking to people every day. Do remember, you are lucky to live in a bellwether state, a bellwether county. So what you do, people are watching what you do to know what is possible. So let's keep things possible, folks. Let's keep things possible. Let's go ahead and say a great good morning to our two geniuses in the studio. El Senor Howard Reynolds and Jacques Van Bebe. Good morning. And now, ladies and gentlemen, and now, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the world, Egberto Willies and Politics Done Right. And here is Jack. Good morning. (laughs) Good morning. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm sure I'm proud of them uh, UAW workers. Oh, man, I tell you, I tell you. uh, And, you know, uh, we're going to extend that, brother, because it's, you know, now it's this, then comes Tesla. And, you know, there are things all around the world. But we're going to talk about that. How you doing, Jack? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Yeah, I was just thinking about the UAW workers. And, uh, you know, one of the most patriotic things a worker can do is join a union. And I applaud the striking UAW workers. Not only are they protecting their rights, but they're protecting all workers' rights and a living wage to boot. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, you know, I can't. I mean, the feeling I got for these three big wins, right? And the thing about it is, look, they workers are stakeholders like anybody else. The, everybody has skin in the game. The ones who have, in my personal opinion, based on what is produced, are the ones who sit on their butts and just profit from uh, the work of everybody else. So therefore, yeah, they are stakeholders. They can say they put their capital. It's another p- thing about how did they get their capital generationally, etc. But we don't need to get into that. The thing about it is, The workers have asserted themselves as stakeholders, my brother, and the workers have won something that they have long been needing, something that people have thought they weren't going to get. Jack, yes, we're all happy, brother. All right. You're done. Okay. Well, let's get busy. You know, I, you know, I thought Jack was going to come this morning other than talking about the workers with an insightful statement. Like, you know, Jack, you always have something like, uh, I don't even know the word to use that has an additional subliminal message or something, but anyway, that's great. That's great. Let's go ahead and get started. Title of the show today is thoughts on new MAGA speaker, MAGA. Barry all but endorses John Whitmire for Houston mayor. I thought I had another piece to the title, but evidently, given that I was so sleepy as I did it, I didn't. I was invited to the Devil's Advocate radio show to discuss the new MAGA speaker of the House and Texas and Wisconsin politics. Indivisible Houston uh, visited PDR at three yesterday where we discussed uh, John Whitmire and uh, Michael Berry and his support, and I kind of cleaned that up for the, sh- the program today. But before we get started, I want to remind everyone, look, we have a great program, folks. Please stick around. We try to make sure to always have something substantive for you. But you know, right now, we are, in fact, in fun drive. And you know what? I hate it. Jack hates it. Howard hates it, having to say, please, please, please support the station. We are hoping that we are going to, in the long run, get so many sustaining members that we can have many shorter or no fun drive, but we're not there yet. And the only way we can get there is through you. Uh, So what I'd like to ask so kindly, first of all, before we get started with a good program, before I play the the first of the two videos, 
probably only get to one after the calls, but the first video. It's the police call 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Very important for us to hear your voice. Uh, hit the number one to contribute. Hit the number two to be on air. Hit the number one to contribute, the number two to be on air. Why do we need your support? We are not a commercial station. We are not governed by what the corporate people who write ads tell us to play. The ad that, uh, you know, you know, uh, people have said things like, uh, well, uh, you know, you guys, we've heard a couple of companies say a few words on your program. There's a difference. Whenever you're listening to radio, commercial radio, commercial TV, the corporate beings has everything to do with writing a co commercial. Whenever you have an underwriter, we are saying, thank you for underwriting what we do. This is what you can say as far as what you do. There's no fluff. There are no lies. There are no misrepresentations. We just say you're underwriting the show. Thank you so kindly for doing a social duty, for doing so, for being a good citizen. Uh, so, so there are a, a, a couple of people have mentioned to me. Well, I heard it's a huge difference, but ninety plus percent of everything that we spent to be able to bring you this program, the music program, the great new program that brother Howard Reynolds is doing. And you heard that voice when he, when he came on there, I mean, great voice. All of that is from you. So we ask you to call 713-526-5738. I want to put a challenge out there for those of you who have never, ever donated to KPFT, but enjoy it. And notice the next word I'm going to say, if you can, look, if you are living paycheck to paycheck, if you are living where you can't even go ahead and get yourself a cup of coffee made nicely by somebody else, we understand and we still want to have you here listening because this program is here to say we want to make life better for you and everybody else. And we want to talk about how we realize that we're already empowered to do that. We are already empowered to do that. We just have to remember we are. But if you have, if you're paying a big cable bill and you have extras to do a lot with and you like the program, you like what we as KPFT has to offer, we ask you, take a little bit of time, take a little bit of your pesetas, and give us a call at 713-526-5738 and donate a little. To I mean, you're not only, it doesn't only feel good to you, you're actually doing a service to the entire country. Because again, folks, we have a mission. Uh, well, it, we here at Politics Done Right, we have a particular mission, and that is to make sure people's working lives, family lives, social lives are better, are not owned or put on hock by a system that simply wants to take from you. And we are here to promote those values. 713-526-5738, extension number one to give I'd love for many of you to give this morning so that I can call you out on air like I've called out many uh, for saying, for, be, for being thankful for doing it. 713-526-5738, extension number one to donate, extension number two to, uh, to come on air. Uh, we have great prizes. I hear me prizes. What am I saying? We have great gifts, and that's all these are gifts we can't pay for your contributions but we sure can give you a gift of thank you uh you get the politics done right t-shirt i think it's a hundred dollar contribution go to politics done right go to kpft 
kfft.org, kfft.org, and hit the donate button and donate. Please do so in the name of Politics Done Right. Or you can just call 713-526-5738. Get one of the KPFT t-shirts, another $100 contribution. You can get a brick so that it's in, it's a permanent display of what you've provided to the station. $25 a month is uh, a, a four by eight brick. $50 a month is a, an eight by eight brick. And of course, have a coffee with Egberto, $250. And look, this is just, this is just a, like a, a thank you. I mean, to give you, to get some coffee, give you a hug if, you don't, if you're not into social distancing. Hey, I, you know, yo soy Latino. I'm a Caribbean Latin dude. We like to hug. Just give, give, give my donors a hug if you, if you want one, of course. Uh, 713-526-5738. Uh, 713-526-5738, extension number one to donate, extension number two to give. So uh, let's see. Uh, uh, It's apparent that you would benefit. Oh, that's an ad. That's an ad. That's an ad. Okay. Uh, Folks, uh, let me me pass it to the studio to see if they have any other uh, pitches before I get into the program. So, Senor Studios, come on in. Senior Studios? Well, I've certainly been called worse than that. Good morning, <laughs> no, Egberto. Well, here's what, wait, here's what happened. I didn't know if it was Howard or <laughs> Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack's already had his uh, moment in the sun here, so I'm going to take the rest. Yes, sir. Uh, Egberto was talking about supporting KPFT, and I want to talk to you about that, too. KPFT is a very valuable source resource to the community. What we are doing with our fund drive this time around is we are giving a parka for every thousand dollars raised. So, so far we've got, what is it? 90, 90 parkas, nine, yeah. 95 parkas. We're going to be giving out to, uh, I forget the name of the place. Center for independent. Uh, yeah. My brain back here, Jack is saying Houston center for independent living, which is true. I left my brain at home today. Apparently. <laughs> Um, We're going to be giving those to the less fortunate. So when you support KPFT, not only are you supporting this valuable community resource, this radio station, where you will hear hours upon hours upon hours of great music, hours upon hours of your shows like Egberto's show. You can call in and talk about whatever you want. Egberto is so accommodating. He picks out these videos and interviews that he's done to play for you. But if you call in, he says, oh, wait a minute, you take priority. Now, what other talk show does that? You say you were uh, on uh, the on with Michael Berry and the mayoral debate and his endorsement. Michael Berry would not stop and talk to you if you were standing there on fire because you don't enhance the bottom line for Michael Berry. Now, when you donate to KPFT, you enhance us. You enhance Egberto. You enhance democracy now. And and I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to because you get the point already. When you support KPFT, you support a wide variety of great programming that this radio station brings to you. Our volunteers. Jack is a volunteer. He comes up here every day, takes time out of his day, no pay, just a good heart, says this is what I want to support because this radio station supports the community. I mean, how many times has a Michael Berry show given out of uh, parkas, backpacks, you know, food drives. What do they do? They take your money. You have to listen to babble and they take your money. Not us. You listen to the truth here. KPOT is the truth. The T in KPOT stands for truth. So there you go. Support KPFT, folks. It's a very valuable community resource and we believe in it. Or otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here. Now back to you, Egberto. Thank you so kindly for that, dear my brother. Um, listen, and uh, you know Howard has always put in kudos onto other folks, uh, and uh, w- that's why we make sure to throw the kudos right back at him. But, uh, Howard was off for a week uh, on vacation, and let me just tell you something: I don't. He wasn't really off because his phone rang from noon to midnight 
from noon to midnight and beyond because that's the type of resource that our brother is to keep this stuff on air. So let's go ahead and make sure to support that which should be supported. 713-526-5738. Okay, I have a 15-minute uh, uh, s- segment I did uh, on my 3 o'clock show with uh, with Daniel Cohen talking about Barry and, and Whitmire. I want you guys to listen to this keenly. Very important. And then we'll go ahead and take it on the other side. That great Houston activist, uh, Daniel Cohen, the sent me some info about the Houston mayoral race. And this applies to everybody. So those of you that I see a whole bunch of you in the chat already, not only from Houston, but from other places, this is the kind of stuff activists are supposed to do, how they get engaged. So El Senor Daniel Cohen, how are you doing today, my brother? I'm good, my brother. How are you, my friend? I am doing fine. I'm doing fine. You know, as, as, as we speak, I am ripping that audio that came out of the Who's show again that you told me about. It's Michael Berry, which if anybody listens to Michael Berry in most cities, if you had a Michael Berry, they would, you know, push him off the air. And here in Houston, it's really a big problem with right wing radio where we need to call out what these people are talking about because they are consistently misogynistic, racist, xenophobic, anti-gay and outside of the mainstream of not just Houston, but the United States. Uh, And that's exactly what this clip shows today as well. It's a mayor's race, which we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about today. But and I have it ready for you. I have okay, the little clip ready. I want you guys to hear it. And I, and guys, remember, this is impromptu. So if it doesn't work out right, you know, we'll still talk about it. But here we go. Scroll down. And the other candidates, people just don't know much about them. That's, that's the nature of, of running for office as a first-time candidate in the city of Houston. You, you don't have the money. You don't have the airways. People don't care. And this, this election has been a really dead election. 51% of likely voters hold an unfavorable opinion of Sheila Jackson Lee, 41% very unfavorable. And that's just that's just off the chart. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee wins um, black voters, 68 to 19. John Whitmire wins white voters, 69 to 18. So there's your number right there. 69 to 18 is a, is the a split. Blacks vote for Sheila. Whites vote for Whitmer. Both Democrats. He's a, he is considered a conservative Democrat. And I know some of you, I ain't no Democrat, man. There's going to be a Democrat mayor. Just go ahead and get comfortable with that. Always has been. There's going to be a Democrat mayor. So you get as mad as you want. Because you're going to decide whether it's going to be Sheila Jackson Lee or John Whitmer. Um, Whitmire has been the uh, dean of the Senate for a very long time, and he's the criminal justice guy. Not saying he's perfect. He's going to say a lot of things you don't like. He's a labor guy. Uh, He's going to talk about the gays. He's going to talk about you name it. But he can win. He's the only one that can win. But I know that Democrats got mad at him a few years ago when they were demanding that there be more air conditioning in the state prison system because the inmates had filed a lawsuit that they needed to be cooled off. And he said, if you want air conditioning, don't commit crime. That's the best you're going to get out of a Democrat. Before you get too mad, understand this. I've run for office three times in the city of Houston and won. I ran for mayor and lost. I've been around campaigns since 1989. I understand the demographic. It is a vastly Democrat district. You can run a Republican against Sheila Jackson Lee in her congressional primary. You can do it. But I know the numbers. And when you understand the numbers and you understand these who these people vote for, then you realize you got to get out of there with the best you can possibly get. Whitmire wins independence 62 to 15. But again, independents are less likely to vote. Sheila Jackson Lee wins Democrats 59-29. Whitmire wins Republicans 82 to 1. <laughs> if Republicans show up and win, Whitmire wins without a runoff. I mean, if Republicans show up and vote, Whitmire wins without a runoff. Why are you a Democrat, Michael? Yes, he is. I didn't say he wasn't. 
If you want me to stand up here and pound on Whitmire as well as pounding on uh, Sheila and be stuck with Sheila Jackson Lee as the mayor, you got the wrong guy. I care too much about it. I've, I've spent too much time down there. I know too much about the power of the mayor. It's a very, 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 very powerful position. You can give up a congressman. They're just going to D.C. They don't have any power. The mayor has all <laughs> the power. Incredible amounts of power. If you don't get Whitmire, you're getting Chilo. It's as simple as that. That's not a hard decision for me. And when he wins, you you can feel free because some of you are complete asses and you will for four years. Hey, I thought you said Whitmire was good. Well, he's over there. At, uh, scroll down. And the other candidates, people just don't. All right. Uh, that's what I wanted folks to hear. In effect, uh, he admits uh, he admits that Daniel that he's a conservative. In other words, that Cohen and that Cohen, I mean, calling your name, that Whitmire is a conservative. No, Cohen is not a conservative. That Whitmire is a conservative. In other words, what Barry is saying is that we are going to elect in a progressive city. We are going to elect, use the machination of a turncoat Democrat to elect a conservative into office. Take it away, Mr. Cohen. Oh, there's all kinds of terrible context that surround all of this different stuff. I mean, first of all, I mean, just straight up for anybody that's wondering, if you want to put it in a nutshell, Michael Berry threw his weight behind John Whitmire in the mayor's race. So that's that's the first that's I mean, that is that's an endorsement that anybody should run away from like the plague. Um, he might not call it an endorsement, but we all heard the clip. We know what it sounds like. We know what he's saying. He's telling his radio audience to go and vote for John Whitmire is what he's saying. And the reason that he finds him to be acceptable is, as you said, he says he's a conservative Democrat. But then he adds some details around it. He he says he's a criminal justice guy. And then he cites the fact that Whitmire uh, refused air conditioning to prisons, which when you call John Whitmire's office, uh, they say that that criticism is unfounded because it was, quote unquote, taken out of context. They run away from that criticism. They attempt to diffuse that criticism. Michael Berry, however, sees it as a compliment of his criminal justice platform. He thinks that people should be cooking to death in 110 and 115 degree cells. And in addition to that, Barry has been one of the ringleaders when it comes to spreading misinformation about the cash bail system. Uh, specifically, he has been pointing at judges in cases where the judges' hands were tied by the Texas legislature on specific cases. And he never mentions the real culprits when it comes to the bail issues, when it comes to felony bail. And I want everybody to know about this because I think it's very important because Republicans never like to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Bail bondsmen. The bail bondsman industry is backed by big insurance, as are many other industries that, Egberto, you, of course, have railed against over and over again, right? All of, all of the, uh, the problems with our healthcare system, the insurance industry supports all of those issues. They support all of the issues when it comes to our criminal justice reforms or criminal justice reform issues in our criminal justice system as well, because it takes you have to raise 10 percent of the money to get out of prison for a felony bail. So what? What bail bondsmen do is they go and they broker a deal and come up with a payment plan and they take a first payment that sometimes is like 1%. And then they turn around and they know all of the tricks of the trade to lobby their way out of ever paying for a bond if somebody doesn't show up one way or another to begin with. Now, personally, and I think there's a lot of evidence to show this. The cash bail system doesn't do anything for anybody. If you're wealthy, if you're part of organized crime and you can raise a million dollar bond, you can get out. If you're poor, you don't get out. It doesn't matter whether or not you did it. It's a matter of whether or not you're rich or poor, period. And so it doesn't keep anybody safe. And there's plenty of studies to show that. The Quattron study uh, shows that. And it came out just earlier this year that it saves better resources related to public safety and that it has no impact on public safety specifically. And then, in fact, it decreases recidivism if, if you have misdemeanor bail reform. It was specific to misdemeanor bail reform. But we're also seeing good results out of Illinois right now, um, which have actually prevented some of the really wealthy mm -hmm. people from who were actually found guilty from paying their way out and at the same time made sure to preserve resources on people that were slapped on the wrist with petty offenses. And it keeps them from getting put back into the system over and over again and bleeding the system dry of our dollars. These dirty bail bondsmen that Michael Berry likes to prop up have absolutely got to go from this system. Whitmire is not going to get rid of them. Michael Berry is on board with that. And that's why Michael Berry supports John Whitmire as the mayor of Houston, because he supports 
a broken criminal justice system. He is the chief defender of that broken criminal justice system. And Barry is on board with that system. He just wants to rip people apart. He wants to punish people. He wants to be dumb on crime. He wants to be hard on families. And this is the stuff that's not being talked about in this election as much as it should. But Hopefully we do our best. We start talking to people and make sure that it comes up because there's going to be a runoff and there's several weeks here for people to hear about it. So when you all go to the polls, you keep this in mind. Michael Berry's thrown his weight behind John Whitmire. And this is the same people. All of the, all of the Alex Mueller cabal is basically now on board with John Whitmire, the Mattress Max of the world, the Richard Weeklies, and now the Michael Berry's. That's your media. That's your fundraisers. That's your entire Alex Mueller machine. So the MAGA machine backs John Whitmire in Houston, period, the end. Now, here's the thing, because I want you to restate that again and again, uh, Daniel, because he whenever you ask him about it, including I don't know if you remember when I called when uh, again, I sent the email to PBS and they asked him the question that I asked. He tried to disassociate, disassociate, disassociate himself from having anything to do with uh with these guys he, he, he gave the impression like i'm just somebody who likes to work with the other side when the other side has no intention of working with democrats they may have intentions of working with him but working with him got the passions and the policies of democrats absolutely nothing so if he's working with them and saying he's successfully working with them that means he is a part of them given that nothing comes back is that right or wrong? Uh, I think it's definitely right. So a couple of key facts that that will give you a bigger picture of all of this. Uh, John Whitmire is the only Senate committee chairman in the Democratic Party in the Texas State Senate because Dan Patrick knew that he could give John Whitmire a state on the committee and he would vote in alignment with him. Either it was ideological reasons or horse trading or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. The point is that they're actually aligned. And that's an issue because Dan Patrick is an extremist who takes Nazi cash and has voted for the most right wing policies. of England Repeat that because right-wing. a lot of people don't believe that he actually did take three million dollars. Explain that real quick for for our audience. Well, so anti-Semitic billionaire Tim Dunn, who told the former Republican Texas House Speaker Joe Strauss that he believed only Christians should be in leadership positions, which means no Jews in leadership position, no Muslims in leadership position and so on and so forth, um, gave money to defend Texas Liberty. Defend Texas Liberty is associated with a consulting firm called uh, consulting firm called Pale Horse Consulting. And Pale Horse Consulting is run by Jonathan Sticklin. Now, Sticklin hired uh, a mask off Nazi named Ella Malding. You can look at her telegrams and her Twitter and see all the anti-Semitism that she's spoken about over the years. And they brought Nick Fuentes in, along with Chris Russo from Texans for Strong Borders. And the more that journalists keep pulling at this web, the bigger the network and the thread uh, becomes of different white supremacists who are involved in the Texas Republican Party. Uh, There have been several good um, journalists who have done work on this at the Texas Tribune, Texas Monthly, as well as an independent journalist over at a a blog called Turtle Diaries. Very well documented. Pictures, links, everything. She's got the receipts. She's got citations as all these different groups. Matt Rinaldi, the head of the Texas Republican Party, has been working with some young Republican groups uh, that they've agreed to certify as members of the Texas Republican Party. And there's now actually a civil war that's broken out over lots of these things within the Texas Republican Republican Party. Um, all of the Texas Republican Party has issues that touch this different stuff, uh, but some of them don't really want to be seen as mask off Nazis. And so they've actually written open letters and things like that to some of these people. But Dan Patrick received $3 million and he was pressured for that. And what he did at first was he denounced Nick Fuentes, the white supremacist, mm-hmm. and but said he wouldn't give up the money. Then they asked him about it again, and he said that he was going to buy Israeli war bonds, which means he's war profiteering because that's going to come back. He's going to make more money off it. Exactly. He's going to make more cash off that. And uh, today he's attempting to try to misdirect everybody by saying he's buying more of them. But the bottom line is that he hasn't denounced Dunn. He has not denounced this entire network. He just used Fuentes. Sticklin got fired. They tried to replace him with Luke Macias. Luke Macias has had on apparently had allegedly had ongoing text threads with um, Nick Fuentes. And that's out there as well. And he has a long history of racism and white supremacy and all the same talking points. So, yeah, Dan Patrick takes Nazi Nazi cash. Um, He owns a radio station here in Houston. If you listen to his radio station, they regurgitate. 
some of the wildest talking points you've ever heard um, about cyber soldiers and, you know, COVID conspiracy theories and, you know, right wing, other right wing theories and all kinds of different stuff. So th- this is these folks don't see this race as nonpartisan. Anybody who thinks this race is nonpartisan is naive because it's kind of like when you see something as a fair fight and the other person doesn't. Right. It doesn't. That means it's not a fair fight. Exactly. You can want it. You could want it to be a nonpartisan race if you want to, that, oh, everybody's just doing the governance and it's above board. But that's not if one side doesn't see it that way. That's it. There's no more. The problem problem is, is that it makes a lot of Democrats by voting for a Whitmer seem very, very naive. And and it's like you. it it is almost like the way Donald Trump got elected. It's because we fell we we fell on uh, on on silliness. The same thing is happening with. Electing Whitmer, it's like we told you so. John Carter uh, said he's joining us from uh, in, uh, from London, jo- just joined from London. Whitmer is not only a conservative, he pals around with those who are actively trying to overturn our elections. He cannot be trusted with our progressive city. I agree 100 percent. Michael Berry really shouldn't have an audience. He shouldn't really even be on the air. He shouldn't be treated as mainstream because he's an extremist. He's fringe and he's supporting John Whitmire for mayor. And when extremists support people for public office, that means that that person showed them that they would be willing to compromise and make room for their positions in public office. And that's a problem for anyone who's not an extremist. I want I want to stop you right there, because that is a key phrase that you just said there. When an extremist sees something in you that they want to support you, we should all run. It says it says something. Absolutely says something. When you are supported by extremists, when you are supported by those who have or believe in policies, some completely anathema to what you believe. And and that's not Houston. Houston is a progressive city. Houston is a city that believes in people. Houston is a city that believes in, in, in equity. Houston is a city that is multicultural. Houston is the star of uh, uh, the star of uh of texas and with that a bell weather state of what america is where america is going we cannot allow a retreat we cannot allow a retreat by bad media because of bad media we cannot allow a retreat by being having folks ill-informed misinformed understand what you're doing and that's what we are trying to do say this look this is the reality this is the reality of what's here and i i love what uh, daniel cohen has done i mean as you can see he's well researched and he does his homework and he follows the nitty-gritty of what's going on in the back end before we go any further brother johnny the mayor of politics done right is here with us so let's go ahead and throw johnny on the air and folks remember 713-526-5738 again that number is 713-526-5738 hit extension number one to contribute extension number two to be on air we don't have any contributions yet we are in fact behind the politics done right program is behind for the uh for the the drive so i ask you so kindly i'm coming to you johnny if you have uh some angels out there good folks with a whole lot of money in their bank account in addition to the five dollar a month six dollar a month ten dollar a month that i'm asking folks to become sustainers or to become one-time donors or to get the t-shirt or whatever in if we have somebody that says you know what i get a thousand dollars i want to give it to a good up to to an organization doing good work why don't you just go ahead and give us a call 713-526-5738 hit extension number one and tell them i want to support programs like politics done right and the great music similar to what howard reynolds plays on fridays at 9 30 i want to be a part of this i want to be a part of moving houston forward i want to be a part of that bellwether county that is doing good stuff 713 
526-5738, extension number one to donate, extension number two to speak on air, or go to kpft.org, kpft.org to go ahead and hit that donate button. Please do so in the name of Politics Done Right. Brother, Mayor, Johnny, what's up? Both you and Captain Reynolds Rapp were very eloquent this morning in your on-air fun drive speech appeals to the audience. I don't Thank you, that sir. Much. Thank you, sir. And even though KPFT Community Radio may be a little bit behind on its current fundraising goal, that doesn't change the fact that we are ahead of the curve on everything else. So here's my question about Michael Berry. Here's another thing about them. Some of their last names sometimes sound so innocuous, you know, until they open up their mouth and you realize who and what they really are. Let me ask you about this guy. Is he one of those talking heads over at KTRH AM radio? Yes. Okay, I figured that much. So, yeah, that makes sense because, you know, it's not necessarily what you say, but how you say it. And he has a, he has a level of contentiousness in his voice that we often see in white male people who vote for Republicans. And he is no exception to that. And it's not just the contentiousness in his voice. The fact that he, the certain words that he chooses, he, the word Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. I've heard this three, four times in his, in his uh, tirade, if you will. They do that on purpose, as you know. Instead of, instead of making the extra effort to say Democratic Party or Democratic politician, they say Democrat politician. And I find that hugely disrespectful, and I know why they do it. One of the reasons they do it is to try to own the libs, and they know that the people that they appeal to, they like it. They love that, and they are siloed. I heard on Arnie Arneson earlier this morning that she said, we are siloed. With all due respect to Arnie Arneson, and I love her. Because she has the same worldview I do? No, no, no. I am not siloed. I'm well aware. I am awoke. Trust me, I'm wide awake. I am not asleep at the wheel like Republican Party politicians. And by the way, I think starting today, I'm going to go back to my uh, way of referring to the Republican Party as repo party politicians. Because it's quick. It's easy. It's R-E-P-O, as in people who repossess automobiles and such. The Repo Party. How about that? How about we say Repo Party from now on instead of uh, while they say Democrat Party, we can say Repo Party. Tit for tat. They want to do that tit for tat? I can do it tit for tat. I don't mind doing it at all. They won't give up? I won't give up. There you go, Johnny. Anything else you want to add? Thank you for those, those statements, my dear brother. Anything else you'd like to add before I jump to Harry? And folks, call 713-526-5738, extension number one to contribute, which I hope many of you will start doing so I can say thank you, or extension number two to be on air like Johnny and Harry right here. Johnny, close the right so I can get to Harry. I agree with the assessment of John Whitmire. He's a dino, Democrat in name only. That is a fact, Jack. Magic Jack. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Have a good one, buddy. All right, let's go to Harry. Come on in, brother Harry. Well, good morning, Roberto. Uh, how are you? I am doing fine, sir. Talk to me. And good morning to Howard Reynolds, and good morning to Jack Vandever. Well, I'll start off with the UAW workers. Well, I, I keep uh, saying this, but it is true, and UAW workers have proven it. Unions are your friends. Kudos to General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis getting the better pay and the deal that they need uh, for the hard work that they do and not letting corpor uh, race, corporation executives take advantage of them and rip them off. And that's why... Uh, uh, this is a lesson to the American people. As Jack Van Dever said at the top, join unions. Uh, they're your friend. They'll help you get better pay so you don't get screwed. Now I'll talk about the Steele Jackson Lee job with my race. Folks, use your best judgment. Get all the sources. Listen to Huberto Willis's sources with Daniel Cohen. Listen to other sources you get off the uh uh, internet, you know, with Michael, you know, listen to what Michael Berry has to say, weigh all the numbers. It uh, seems like we, if, uh, with the numbers, we have a, uh, ethnic divide there. Blacks seem that they want to 
give Sheila Jackson Lee a chance to do what she could do to make this a better city. And and White seemed to want to uh, stick with John Whitmire. Uh, but, you know, it's just wh- wh- whatever you are, black, white, brown or yellow, just use your best judgment when it comes to these candidates and and try to so you can make an informed uh, an intelligent decision by looking at all the resources uh, that you can get and the research you get. So you make an intelligent decision and you'll do what's best for Houston. Uh, there is what I wanted to mention. Real what, quick, Harry. I'll, I'll say it real quick. When I was talking about Halloween yesterday, the movie, and I was uh, the part two in the Halloween, the extension of Halloween, and I was talking about the Druids. Uh, they also, the, I'll go into a little more detail that they burned people alive and from the remains of the burns, they felt they could see omens of the future. And Donald Pleasant's character, Dr. Lewis was talking about how, uh, Halloween is the unconscious mind. And that's what he was explaining about Michael Myers, who, who, who when he was doing all that killing, he thought that with that evil force, what he was doing is normal. Jack, I mean, uh, Harry, look, thank you for calling in as usual. Uh, you're, you're a good man. Thank you so kindly. I have to go ahead and, and talk about that UAW, but I'm going to want to talk about that right. racial issue you brought up. So thank you so kindly for bringing that up right. for me. To, uh, I, I, I am glad you brought that up because I do want to talk right. about that. Thank you, brother. Peace. And All, right. I just All, right. The- All right. Let's go ahead. Uh, Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. Thank you for being here. Eric Hayes uh, from Kingwood, Texas. Thank you for being here. On And th- these are folks in our chat right now. Look. Michael Berry wanted to highlight something specific, and, the, and his tonality said it all. Black people for Sheila, the black woman. White people for John Whitmer, the white man. I don't want to go there. That's not the issue. You know, two things can be mutually exclusive or not. Let me tell you something. This is not a black and white issue. There, and and for, first of all, things should never be black and white, especially in our economic system. When you make it a black and white issue, that's defeatist thinking. That's minimalist. That, that's, that is short-sighted thinking. That is the, the, I don't like to use this word on air, but it's the stupidest type of thinking. First of all, folks. All of you who listen to Politics Done Right, and I want, or for those who are first listening to Politics Done Right today, I do not believe in race. I speak race just because we live in a racialized society. That's my belief that is proven by facts. Now, that we have this stupid thing that we, that white people go for, uh, for, for uh, Whitmer because he's white and black people go for uh, they uh, for for Sheila Jackson Lee because it's she's black is ridiculous. This is a class thing, folks. So, so to my white brothers and sisters and to my black brothers and sisters, I don't care if Whitmer was the person that I knew was going to do right by the middle class, do right by the poor, do right by passing policies that I know will help all Houstonians and not the corporatocracy, etc. I would be on the bandwagon. But it's simple to make things racial because you can see the race thing. It's simple to make it that way because you can. I will never do that. I support always folks that are doing right by the middle class, by the poor, by all Americans. Thank you, Harry, for pointing out what a lot of people would kind of just slide by. But when they go in the voting booth, they're thinking pigmentation. They're thinking race. They're thinking color. That is the easiest way to make silly, bad decisions. Let's look at policy, policy, policy. Lynette, come on on to the show, my dear. Lynette, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. First, I want to say thank you all for your service. Let me just encourage everybody to give along with me, whatever you can, small or large, 
online if you don't have time to call, because I totally don't have time to call either. But I wanted to encourage everybody, let's stay together. Let's not be distracted by all of the things that try to keep us distracted. And um, let's just give, because we have these conversations that talk about the economics, that talk about the UAW, because, you know, co- the co- corporations are making, with interest rates going up, corporations are making huge dollars and they don't want to share it. But if we all work together we can, you know, because I, again, work for Southwestern Bell, being a part of the union and all of that, we can make things happen. So don't be distracted by the noise. And thank you all again. I love the conversation. So join me in, in giving whatever you can. Thank you so much, Bert Toki. You all keep up the great work. Lynette, thank you so kindly. You are a gem. I want to thank Alex for being uh, so far this morning, the first donor to KPFT. Love you, my dear brother, uh, uh, brothers. Alex, thank you so kindly for your contributions. We cannot do this without you, and we are still way behind. So please take Lynette's lead as well. Lynette says she's going to be providing as soon as she can get to a a, 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 a web or something. But thank you, Lynette, as well. And thank you for those words. Those are whenever we hear calls uh, like yours, Lynette, we are encouraged because we are here talking and knowing that there's somebody else at the other end of the talk uh, that, that's actually en- enhancing what we're saying. Just like Harry reminded me to, to bring out the race uh, class issue. Thank you, Harry. Uh, and Johnny, of course, always. <laughs> Johnny will always be the mayor of politics and right. Anyway, I want to jump on. And by the way, I'm not going to get to all the subjects as usual. So please go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter, and you'll have all the videos that I wanted to show today. There's a couple more that I wanted, but I won't get to. But I wanted uh, to hit on this story in Common Dreams, one of my favorite rags, Uh, this one by Jake Johnson, who says, UAW pledges all necessary resources to help unionize key Tesla factory. As Jack mentioned at the beginning of the show, we believe Every single employee should be unionized. Every corporations are members of unions. NASE, N-A-S-E, look at the National Association of Small Businesses. We also have uh, all the different metallurgical corporations, uh, energy, uh, energy associations, etc. They are all, they all realize that they are coming together so that they have the power to go to Congress and get what they want. Yet they want you, the employee, the most important stakeholder, bar none, to sit back and just take it. That's why tomorrow we're going to talk about Walgreens and CVS and how they're screwing their employees. Every single job should be unionized so that you can speak as a group so that you can have the power of your voices. Coming from Brother Jake Johnson, the United Auto Workers has reportedly offered to provide organizers with all the resources they need to unionize Tesla's electric car factory in Fremont. I want to stop right there and remind you, the the, the selling point that or the, the GM, uh, uh, Alistair and uh, Ford, they were trying to Say, well, look, if we give you guys money, what's going to happen to all those com- those companies in the South that aren't unionized? No, you don't go to the lowest common denominator. You go to the proper denominator. We unionize those other companies in these other states. Whether, yes, I know that they are not, they are uh, for, they are what they call uh, 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 free to work, not free to work states. They're called, uh, I forgot the name of the kind of states that they're called, right to work states. They're not right to work. They're, they're right to work for free states or right to work for little bit states. Don't be fooled. Every company needs to be unionized. Following uh, News Monday that the UAW reached tentative agreement contract with General Motors, uh, the final big three holdout after six weeks on strike, Bloomberg reported that Tesla's roughly 20,000 worker plant in Fremont, California, currently has a UAW organizing committee whose members are talking to co-workers about the advantages of collective bargaining. You know, Tesla has been firing people who attempt to create unions. Those are our heroes. Of course, they're going to sue Tesla and they're going to win because, again, you don't have these corporations with these billionaires making all these monies on your back. Remember, all they do is invest 
their money and they say, they like to say, I'm putting my money at risk. That's why I should pay less taxes on it. I'm putting my money at risk. That's why I should. Ha- That's BS. For those that are investors who are sitting at their pools, who are sitting down doing nothing, the only people really putting their, themselves at risk are those employees who could get their hands chopped off by a robot, who could fall off a bridge as they build it, who could get brain damage as they work with some of your kids. Every single teacher, every single lawyer, every single doctor, every, every person working for somebody else should be in a union to en- ensure. And you know what? That, that also helped the small business. Why is that? Because they no, longer have the, the, they no longer have to say, I have to compete on a different playing field. Let me tell you better. And if we have universal health care, Medicare for all, health care for all, it also puts the small business at the same level of the corporations and those who treat their employee best really gets the employee and folks they the way our system is made to screw the little men and the small businesses who have been indoctrinated into not realizing that progressive values is what will make them continually viable come on man 713-526-5738 extension number one to donate and we need more donations more contributions to keep us being able to realize that we to to let folks know that they are already empowered you already have it in you we just have to flex it you already have it we have to flex it as a collective that is how we win i'm a forever optimist not a pessimist forever optimist that we will do it slowly but we'll get it done come on in tag Good morning, Hi, Edberto. Good, good morning, sir. I've got to ask, are you familiar with Victor Frankel and Logotherapy? No, please tell me about it. Well, um, he's got a book, uh, and it's just a small book, easy read, uh, uh, Man's Search of Meaning. And it, he was a, a, um, a Nazi, uh, you know, put in the camp, concentration camp, and he mm-hmm. actually escaped. And so, um, but he he lived to rewrite the book that the Nazis took away from when he went to camp, and and that was his. Um, but but he talks a lot about how people live up or down to these labels that they everybody wants to hang on everybody, you know, right, right. wing, left wing, whatever, you know. And he explains it very very well. It was a it was, the book was uh, very important to me. What's the name uh, of the book again? That, uh, man's search of meaning. Okay, great. I'll, you know, I'll look it up what, and put it in. Put it a, yeah, logo therapy. If you don't know about logo therapy, you don't have a clue what the ma- lamestream media is doing to you today. It's it's tag, just crazy. And, and he tag, explained it so well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. I'm going to use that as your statement of the day. I only have one more call that I can take, and Jimmy's online, so I want to get to Jimmy. I want to Thanks. thank you for calling, and I, I I tell you what, if you can, because I, I want to make sure and get the spelling right, drop a line to in uh, to KPFT at politicsandright.com with a link to that book, so I can let the, our people know about it in the newsletter. Thank you so kindly, Tag. Thanks. Good day. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, Jimmy, come on on, Jimmy. Good morning, Alberto. Uh, I have two topics real quick. Um, yes. yes. Unions will help reduce the wealth gap in this country. We have too many wealthy people and too many poor people. We need more to raise up the uh, poor people to the middle class, and uh, unions can help do that. Yes, sir. And also, the, the yeah. Uh, and the other topic is Texas still has corporal punishment. There was a girl at Overton High School in East Texas who was beaten three times by her principal with a wooden paddle after the second swat. She said, that's too hard, and she didn't want any more. But her mother and the principal persuaded her to take the third one. Anyway, they arrested the principal for injury to a child, but they have now dropped those charges on the principal. Anyway, the Texas legislature needs to pass a ban on this beating of children with wooden boards. We are one of only 17 states that still allows this child abuse in our schools. 
I urge all of your listeners to contact the, their members of the legislature and ask them to ban this uh, horrible child abuse representative. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy? Uh, thank you very much. And Jimmy, I am behind on answering emails. I have an answer for you when you spoke about uh, Medicare, Medic, uh, Medicare Advantage. I really want to answer that with a link to, uh, to a, a very comprehensive blog that I wrote on that using some of uh, Tom Hartman's word and a few other people who run uh, the, the, the uh, social security system. I want to pass that blog to you. I will answer that with the blog. And uh, please read that in detail because it's important that, you know, uh, honest people like you understand what's happening. Thank you for your call, Jimmy. And thank you for your support of Politics Done Right and the, and the station. Thanks, Alberto. Uh, yeah, I love my Medicare Advantage because I have no copay. It's free. I, I go to the doctors and the I got you, brother. I, I read your email in detail. I, I want you to read the blog that I'm going to tell you. There's nothing. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not telling you that what you, your your current state is not great. I just want you to read this blog in detail for the future. So thank you very much, Jimmy. For uh, I'm looking. I'll be looking forward to it, Eric. Right Thank you, brother. You have a great day. All right, folks. Uh, oh, wow. We have one more call and a very little time. Just pass it along. I'm going to take it real quick and hang up. Go ahead. Uh, caller, come on in. Come on in. You back? You're up. Yes. Come on in real quick. Hey, hey, this is Mitchell. Morning, Mitchell. Tell me your point because we only have like 30 seconds. Okay. I just wanted to say that um, I don't feel that Americans will ever change the way they think. With, with these progressive um, ideas, because ever since we're little kids, we're always brainwashed how we should always uh, follow the American dream and, fo and and pick ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Anytime we ask for help, it's seen as a weakness. So that has to change for us to really Mitchell, change. Thank you, Mitchell. You made, you made a very good point, and I am more optimistic than you are, and I'm going to beg you to come on our, on our bandwagon. We are going to be able to show folks why what you said is where we need to go. Thank you, brother, for calling in. Uh, look, folks, I need to jump to the studio real quickly. Come on in, Howard and Jack, real quick. I am going to defer to Jack this morning. Jack? Congratulations, UAW workers, on your, your successful strike bid. And keep it up. Keep it up. Right. Thank you very much, Jack. Folks, please, we still have time for you to call. And, and remember, if you go ahead and give in the name of Politics Done Right, it'll still be attached to my program. 713, not to me, to the station. 713-526-5738, extension number one to support us now. Please, 713-526-5738, extension number one to contribute to the show. Thank you, Harold Reynolds. Thank you, Jack Van Bever. Thank you, callers. Great for inciting me. And thank you so kindly, audience. Love you. And that is from the heart. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.